Uh, hi, everyone. So welcome to the Computing at ANU uh, webinar. My name's Stephen Gould. I'm a professor here in the Research School of Computer Science. And I'm going to be telling you a little bit about uh, the Bachelor of Advanced Computing degree program here. And then my colleagues will be telling you about other degree programs and uh, experience from, from a student's perspective. So I thought I would just start by giving you a bit of an overview of uh, the ANU. Uh, so the Australian National University. This is a university, it's in fact the only national university in Australia that was established in 1946 by the Australian government. University, we are situated here in Canberra uh, and uh, federal funding uh, students and research. We have about 26,000 students, and that is split uh, approximately 50-50 between uh, postgraduate students, which includes postgraduate coursework and PhD students, as well as undergraduate students across the university. And I'll have a, a few more numbers in the following slides on uh, the different um, undergraduate programs at the at the university. Uh, an important thing about our university is that we're research focused. So uh, as I said, uh, the student numbers are split about 50-50 between undergraduate and postgraduate, uh, including the PhD students. But all of the faculty engage actively in, in research. And a lot of that research, that cutting edge research, flows back into the way we design our edu education programs and how we teach our courses. So if you come to, to the ANU and you take uh, traditional courses in computer science or engineering, you're not only getting just the, the uh, fundamental theory and background, but you're also getting exposed to some of the latest research that uh, is happening in Australia and around the world. Uh, on, on that point, we're ranked number one in Australia. So we're the top university in Australia, both research and education, and we're also ranked uh, number 29 in the world according to the QS World Rankings. Um, and so that those those are rankings that look at, at a broad range of measures, uh, including the quality of the education, um, the exposure, student experience, uh, research, and so on. We also have very very strong alliances with other organisations, uh, which uh, allow. Uh, you as a student coming to the ANU to increase the opportunities uh, for engagement, uh, collaboration and exposure to the various bits of research and innovation that's happening uh, within Australia and, and around the world. Um, I should say the, the image that you're looking at, the, the picture uh, at, the, at the top right is our uh, Vice Chancellor and President, that's uh, Professor Brian Schmidt, and he is a Nobel Prize winning uh, physicist and uh, he, he leads the university. Uh, the, the picture you're seeing down the bottom is a, uh, an aerial shot of Canberra where uh, the ANU is, is located and uh, we have a very, very beautiful campus that's uh, quite spread out. Uh, there's a lot of, of space, a lot of greenery. Um, and the campus extends all the way down to, to the lake, which is uh, the centre of, of Canberra. Okay, so uh, a little bit more about our student body. These are statistics from uh, last year. As I said, we've got a total of 26,000 uh, students, uh, 26,605 to be precise. And uh, that's split roughly um, with uh, about 3,000 or 2,500 PhD students across the various uh, schools and, and colleges, 10,000 postgraduate students. So these are students who've already completed an undergraduate degree but are going on with further study, and then about 13,000 undergraduate students. So this, this makes the student cohort at ANU uh, quite small relative to uh, other Australian universities. And of course, the advantage there is that the um, the, the, the teacher to student ratio, the academic to student ratio is much, much higher. So we, we like to have our students, particularly our undergraduate students, uh, exposed uh, and have contact with uh, academics who are actively engaged in research. And when I talk to you a little bit later about the, the, the education programs, you'll see that there's a, a strong element of project work and uh, research in, in those programs. In terms of the College of Engineering and Computer Science, we have uh, around about uh, a little over 3,000 students and about 10% of those students are PhD students. Uh, we have about 800 postgraduate students and about 2,000 undergraduate students. So, uh, so we, in, in terms of the total number of uh, students at ANU, quite a large percentage of those 
uh, in the College of Engineering and, and Computer Science. We also have about a 50-50 split between international students and domestic students. So uh, as a student coming here, you, you uh, become part of a very broad demographic and exposure to uh, a whole lot of different backgrounds and, and different experiences. There are two um, schools within the College of Engineering and, and Computer Science. Uh, there's the, the engineering school, which uh, I, I won't talk uh, too much about, um, but they have 1,200 students. And then there's the research school of uh, computer science, which has a total of almost 2,000 students. And again, you can you can see this bit there of um, you know, uh, a little bit over 100 PhD students, 600 postgraduate students, and 1,200 um, undergraduate students. And uh, the split here between international and, and uh, domestic is, is a little bit more weighted to, to international, uh, but I'd say that's uh, that's mostly in the, the postgraduate and, and the PhD uh, programs. In terms of the undergraduate, it's it's probably still closer to a 50-50 split. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about the facilities that we have here at at the ANU, and in particular those ones that are important for the computer science and engineering degrees. Um, so we have um, very close uh, by, um, and in fact, uh, with some offices on campus, the Commonwealth Scientific and uh, Industrial Research Organization, the CSIRO, and part of that DART 61. And uh, this is a Commonwealth funded organization that does fundamental science for Australia. And the DART 61 uh, component of, of the CSIRO uh, is engaged in, in a lot of data science. It, it came out of a previous organization known as NICTA, uh, got, got uh, absorbed into CSIRO and became Data61. And we have quite a close collaboration and engagement with Data61. So a lot of our PhD students are co-supervised uh, with Data61. And a lot of researchers from Data61 come in and teach uh, some of our courses. So, for example, our um, machine learning course, our statistical machine learning course, is taught by uh, Data61 researchers. We also have on campus um, the Australian Centre for Robotic Vision. Uh, this is a collaboration between four different universities around Australia to push forward the advance of uh, robotic vision and artificial intelligence. Uh, in addition to these two facilities listed, there's the uh, national compute infrastructure that is housed uh, at the ANU. This is Australia's largest uh, supercomputer, and um, its uh, access to the, the supercomputer is available to researchers across Australia. But the advantage of having it housed at the ANU is that uh, we, we get very uh, very good access to, to that uh, supercomputer. A lot of our research projects make use of that supercomputer facility, and uh, a lot of undergraduate projects, if they're data intensive, can also make use of, of that facility. Okay, so talking a little bit about the, the research areas in um, computer science. Uh, the, the School of Computer Science is broken up into what we call three different themes. There's the intelligence theme, which is built around uh, artificial intelligence and data mining. Um, there we, we look at uh, how to build intelligent agents, um, how do you represent knowledge and reason about that knowledge within a, within a machine, within a computing environment. We do a lot of machine learning and more recently um, deep learning. Um, and then we also look at planning and optimization. And so these all fit together into the intelligence theme, which is really about uh, data and uh, intelligent agents. How do, how do we build machines that, that can think? We also have a systems theme, which is looking at computing systems. Uh, how do we get the most out of our systems? So uh, high performance computing, uh, that relates to things such as the uh, the NCI, so the National Compute Infrastructure, supercomputers, uh, but also lower level compute, so uh, uh, GPUs, graphical processing units, and how we can get uh, acceleration of computing systems making use of uh, those GPUs, which are now commodity hardware in, in everyone's machine. The systems theme also looks at how humans use computers, uh, so in particular, 
um, uh, human computer interaction and designing systems that allow humans to use computers more more easily uh, and then of course the more traditional programming languages how do we design good languages um, how are those languages implemented and then the uh, the discipline of, of software engineering how to best develop large complicated software systems in teams the final theme is the theory theme uh, this looks at the more um, fundamental theory behind computer science and, and the mathematics of computer science. And so in that theme, uh, research is going on in terms of uh, algorithms. Uh, so understanding algorithms, how do you design algorithms and get them to accomplish uh, what you want them to do, as well as check their correctness. Uh, how do we manage data in terms of databases and uh, looking at logical uh, structures and, and primitives that are the underlying theory behind computers. Um, so of course this is how we, we organize themes within the school, but as part of your degree program you get exposed to, to all of those themes. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about um, projects that you can do within these themes uh, a, a little bit later on. Okay, so looking at the the degrees that are offered within the Research School of Computer Science. Uh, we have five degree programs. There's the, uh, in, in the undergraduate, uh, at the undergraduate level, and then a number at, at the graduate level. I'll be primarily talking about uh, the two uh, degrees, the Bachelor of Advanced Computing, R&D, and the Bachelor of Advanced Computing Honours. Uh, so they're our two uh, core computer science degrees. Um, they're, they're essentially the same degree. The one has a more research and development component, uh, but they follow a very, very similar structure. And they're both uh, four-year degrees. Um, OK, so let me show you the structure of those degrees. Um, so here we're looking at three different uh, degree programs. On, on the left column is the Bachelor of Information Technology degree. That's a three-year degree. In the middle is the Bachelor of Advanced Computing uh, Honours degree, which is the one that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, and then my colleague will, will talk about the Bachelor of, of Software Engineering uh, following my presentation, and that's the column on the right. Uh, so what you can see in this degree structure, you, you don't have to worry too much about reading the, the text, uh, but it's showing the progression of the degree from first year, which is down the bottom, through to the fourth year up the top. And uh, what's color coded in this plot are the different types of courses that you take. So in green are the core computer science courses. In um, orange are uh, core um, are, are core electives, so computer science uh, electives that are part of the, the program. Um, in yellow are a new wide electives, so those are electives that you're free to take across the university. They don't have to be in computer science or engineering. You can take uh, any other course offered at the university. And then in, in pink and, and purple are the, uh, the specialization courses and the, the, the project courses at, at the end of the degree. So, so what you can see within this structure is that we try to offer a lot of flexibility in terms of electives. Uh, every semester at the ANU, you can choose to take an elective. Um, that's, again, of your choosing. It doesn't have to be in computer science or engineering. There are some computing electives that you can take. And then the first two years of the degree are really there to cover the basics of, of computer science. So we cover all of the compulsory courses in computer science from uh, programming languages and software development through to some of the mathematics and logic that you need for future courses. In your third year uh, under this um, program, you get to take a number of specializations um, in your degree. So uh, again, I'll have a future slide on this, but you can choose to go in depth in a particular field of your choosing. And so that could be artificial intelligence, it could be software systems, it could be theory, and you take a sequence of four courses in that specialization. Now, in this uh, degree structure or plan, we've shown that all happening within your third year, but there is flexibility in the degree to start those courses earlier, as long as you've met the prerequisites, or even take them through in, into your fourth year if you haven't completed them all in, in your third year. And then finally, in the fourth year of your degree, you complete an independent research project, which is sort of your capstone project. And there you um, choose a, an academic um, supervisor who will guide you through the project and you choose a, a project of, of your interest 
And then generally what happens is you'll meet either weekly or fortnightly with your academic supervisor, and they will guide you through the research components of this project. At the end of the year, you write a thesis, which is um, evaluated as, as your honours thesis or your, your capstone project. Um, and a lot of students use this to, uh, to sort of bootstrap their, their research career. So they'll go on and continue in maybe a PhD degree, building on the research that they did in their honours you know, honors year. But you don't necessarily have to. You could have a more implementation-focused honours project where you're releasing a software artifact, such as um, a um, web uh, application or you know, mobile phone application and so on. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit more, more about uh, the specializations. So this is the sequence of four courses that you can take um, in, uh, you know, starting as early as your second year, but typically in your third year and then through into your fourth year. And these are broken down um, by the titles that you can see here. So there are specializations in artificial intelligence where you're looking at building um, artificial agents, so machines that can think and reason about the world. Uh, intelligent systems is, is very similar, but it looks more at the <coughs> systems aspect of building these agents rather than the underlying algorithms. There's machine learning, which is a particular um, uh, subfield of artificial intelligence where machines uh, learn from data. So that's where, uh, for example, if you want to train a computer to recognize the difference between a dog and a cat, you can show it lots and lots of images of dogs and cats and it will learn by itself how to distinguish between these. And that's very, very different from writing a piece of software to tell the difference between a dog or a cat. You're writing a piece of software that can learn and then it learns from examples. There's a specialization in systems and architecture. And this is looking more at uh, computing systems. So how do we build high performance computer computers? How do we build um, energy efficient computers? Uh, how do we build mobile computers? And it looks at all of the, the various aspects of the architecture and the systems, uh, software systems, as well as hardware systems around those architectures. There are specializations in theoretical computer science. So you may have heard of problems such as uh, whether P equals NP, um, looking at algorithmic complexity, looking at um, what, what is possible in, in computer science. So what is computable, what is not, uh, what are the underlying theories and principles behind uh, computers. Um, and then in addition to these specializations, we also offer majors. Uh, which is a, a larger body of courses that you can add to your degree, uh, which is essentially another depth um, and, and, and breadth component. Um, so the, the two majors that we offer in, in terms of the Bachelor of Advanced Computing degree, uh, the software development uh, major, uh, and you'll hear a little bit more about software development later on, and, and this sort of encompasses some of that, as well as um, cybersecurity, which is um, a very important topic when you're looking at computer systems, is how do we make those computer systems and computer networks um, secure so that people who, who have access to them get access to them and can be productive, people who shouldn't have access to them don't get access to them. Okay. Uh, so finally, uh, I, I talked about the end of your degree program where in your fourth year you get to do a, an honours project. Uh, you get to choose whether this is a 12-unit project or a 24-unit project. Um, so uh, I guess just to take a step back, each semester at ANU, you generally take four courses. Each course is worth six units. And so uh, that's 24 units for a semester or 48 units over the year. If you elect to take a 24 unit project, that's considered an honours level project, and you usually take that 12 units per semester. So you'll take 50% of your load in the first semester and 50% of your load in the second semester will be dedicated towards um, this honours project. The project, as I said before, is in an area of your choosing. And usually by the time you've gotten to your fourth year, you've had exposure to a bunch of different academics through coursework and some uh, projects. Um, and so you'll approach an academic member of staff and ask them to supervise your project. <clears throat> Often there's a negotiation about um, the particular deliverables for the project. So the project should align with the academic member of staff's interests as well as yours. Um, and then that staff member will supervise you throughout that year, make sure you're making progress on the project as well as provide you with uh, guidance and um, intellectual input into explaining the the research component of, of those projects. And this project can be in any of the themes um, that, that we discussed. So 
it'll fall into either the intelligence theme, the systems theme, or the theory theme. Okay, so finally, I wanted to um, give you a slide that shows um, where the degree rules are. So if, if you're interested in, in looking at the uh, particularities of the degree program, so how many units you have to do of, of each course and dig a little bit deeper into the individual courses, you can go to uh, the ANU website, Programs and Courses. So that's at programsandcourses.anu.edu.au. And you can search the various degree programs and courses. So the URL down the bottom of this slide gives you a link to the Bachelor of Advanced Computing degree. And as you read through that web page, you'll see the list of courses that you need to take for the degree, as well as a discussion of the specializations that I mentioned earlier and electives and so on. And um, for all of those courses, you can click on the, the course codes and you can read more about, about those courses. So this is a really useful uh, resource that I'd encourage you to, to go and have a look at. Uh, a lot of the courses will also list the convener for that course. And so you can uh, contact that convener if the website doesn't answer all of your questions and ask them a little bit more about, about that course. Okay, so with that, I'll, I'll hand over to, uh, to my colleague to um, talk about the, the other degree programs we have here. Okay, okay. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jen Chang. Uh, I'm currently the program convener for the Bachelor of Software Engineering uh, Honor Degree. So I uh, thank Steve for a great uh, introduction to the uh, ANU school, uh, college and school. So I, I will jump directly to, the, to, the, to this uh, Bachelor of Software Engineering degree. Okay. And as uh, uh, Steve just introduced, uh, we, uh, in, in our school, we have a three uh, degree program. Uh, software engineering degree is another uh, one of the, the, the four years honor degree program, uh, uh, standing on the right of the, your, your slides. Uh, and uh, the, the, if you compare the, the, the two uh, honor degrees, the Bachelor of Advanced Computing and Bachelor of Software Engineering, the first two years they, they overlap largely. You know, like Steve uh, explained, uh, they are about the basic computing theories and programming skills uh, they, they share in common. And but when you move to the uh, third and fourth year, um, the two degrees uh, start uh, differentiating uh, from each other. And uh, for the software engineering degree, I, later I will explain uh, in a little bit more detail. We focus more on the on the practice, and, and uh, especially we have this uh, capstone software engineering project, so called Tech Launcher project, uh, in which uh, you 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 will work together with uh, not just students from the computing school, also the students uh, uh, university wide. You team up and work with some real world client and to solve their uh, real world problems. So this is something uh, a difference uh, in the software engineering degree. Okay, and uh, the, you will do it. You have a chance to do it uh, twice, actually, at the the, the 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 third year and the fourth year. Or at the fourth year, you have a, a, another option, like Steve suggests, you can choose to do a honor project, which is the 24 units uh, project. Okay, uh, let's move on. And uh, here's is a little bit uh, uh, more information about the. Major, minor, and specialization. Uh, Steve already gave a very good introduction. So, uh, but uh, for the software engineering degree and uh, the uh, Bachelor of Advanced Computing, the, 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 the major, and minor, and specialization we offered uh, somehow overlap, but also different. So, if you are interested in one particular degree and uh, one, or one particular major, you need to check the website uh, that, that Steve just mentioned to make sure you enroll in the degree, you can take that major uh, you, you would like to take. And this slide I'm showing you is uh, is currently uh, what we offer for the 2020 intake. So if you uh, enroll in our program in 2020, you should be able to take all those uh, majors, minors, and specializations. And the difference between these uh, three type of things uh, actually uh, uh, depends on the number of course and the level of course you take. Okay, for the major uh, is in general is a mix of the the, the 1,000, 2,000, and uh, through all the uh, levels, eight courses. And uh, currently for the software engineering degree, uh, uh, you have two major you can do. One is the advanced intelligence system. Another is the cybersecurity. Okay? Or you can use uh, your uh, electives uh, to do a minor, uh, which is uh, for uh, 1,000, 2,000 level courses. And uh, one, uh, the, the only one minor uh, offered for the 2020 intake, which is computer science foundation. And, uh, but we do offer a, a quite a large, wide range of specializations, which, is the, which means you, you need to take full 
uh, advanced level of computing courses, uh, 3,000 and 4,000 level. And uh, the, the specialization we offer include uh, artificial intelligence, intelligence system, computing system, system architecture, theoretical computer science. And Steve already uh, discussed, um, you know, covers uh, the introduction of those uh, specializations, so I won't uh, spend too much time on that, so we can leave uh, more uh, time for, for Q&As. Okay, so this is uh, uh, one thing uh, very unique uh, uh, to the soft software engineering degree, honor degree. Uh, uh, as you can see, the course code is COM3500 uh, and COM4500. Uh, com, uh, if uh, you enroll the software engineering degree, uh, you, you, you have an option, you must do the COM3500, which is the junior level tech launcher project. You team up with some senior students and uh, mentored by your senior students. And when you uh, turn into the, the, the fourth year, uh, you, you can take the, the, the 4500, then you play the role uh, as a senior developers to, uh, to mentor, uh, to mentor the, the junior developers who, 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 who take the 3500. Uh, Okay, so this uh, Tech Launcher project, like I explained, you can find the information on the website. It's uh, really the collaborative, uh, university-wide collaborative effort. It's a kind of flagship uh, uh, project offered by, by the school. So you have opportunity to work with uh, computing students, engineering students, students from art and design, social science, humanity, and uh, you have a real client from the government agency, from local industry, and from maybe another, uh, you know, the professor from the medical school have a very hard, uh, you know, biomedical problems uh, they, they would like you to solve, help them to solve, and uh, you, you, you enroll in this project and uh, to solve some real world problems, okay? And uh, uh, another thing uh, quite unique to the software engineering degree is this uh, 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 COM 4800, which is uh, industry experience. Uh, as I uh, show on the slides, uh, this is part of your program. It's a compulsory. You have to complete this in order to graduate with a software engineering degree. But this course has uh, zero credit. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, you, 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 most of the students uh, take this uh, uh, course. It's not really a course. No lectures, uh, no, no tutorials, no workshops. It's really a uh, push you to the to the to the industry. So uh, so it, it expose you to the, the the general employment context, to the professional context, and to the software engineering context. Okay. So uh, you, you, most of the students use their vacation time uh, during the winter vacation or summer vacation. They find the internship opportunity in local industry or the, the currently uh, we also allow the overseas industry experience. But to, 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 to do the overseas industry experience to make, make, make sure the, the quality and the learning outcome can be achieved, can be met, uh, you need to have my pre-approval for the overseas industry experience. Okay, but uh, no, no matter whether it's overseas or, 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 or local, and uh, what you need to do for to, to get this zero credit, uh, you know, pass this zero credit course is you need to accumulate 420 working hours during the four years of your uh, study at ANU. Okay, anytime you can start actually anytime uh, when, when once the, you start your program at ANU. And uh, uh, but we have certain uh, constraints, a requirement on the this uh, 420 hours. Uh, you, 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 you must satisfy in order to, to pass this course. Uh, the is one most important thing is that because this is a software, software engineering degree, so you must have at least 140 working hours in the software engineering context. That means you have, must work on something related to the, uh, in, the, in the software engineering development uh, life cycle, from requirement to design to some coding, to so testing and software maintenance, uh, anything. And uh, that we you can claim the working hours in the software engineering context. <laughs> and other than that, you, we also give you flexibility if you want to uh, explore, uh, you know, in, you know, to have some experience in the general IT professional context. You can also uh, do that, okay? Or you, you, if you, you even you want to, you know, just have a general understanding how the employment environment looks like in Australia. You would like to work in the McDonald's. It's also up to you. <laughs> you, you have the the the, the, the choice. And for the for the any any employment, but uh, for whatever the, the the general any employment, you, what you can do is the, is the less than uh, as I uh, as I noted on the on, on the slide uh, must be less than 140 working hours. You cannot do all the 40 420 hours uh, all in McDonald's. Okay, so uh, just uh, just uh, make sure you understand the rules very correctly. And uh, uh, finally, uh, uh, on, on this uh, program course website, uh, uh, you can find the whole program information and uh, follow this link. 
and uh, over there you have uh, also the the, the template, uh, the, the 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 study plan uh, on the website. So you can you can have a uh, check exactly what course you expect to take in the first year, second year, third year, and fourth year, and forward. Okay.